Coding Made Easy. So what's up everybody, this is Peter aka Coding Made Easy coming to you guys with your third OpenGL tutorial and in this tutorial we are going to be taking a quick look at fragment shaders. So in the last tutorial we took a look at vertex shaders and we saw that vertex shaders the only purpose of them is to output a position and they are we learned that shaders are programmers that run at uh, our programmers <laughs> we learned that shaders are programs that run on the GPU and so the vertex shaders are many programs that run on the GPU that execute the program for every single vertex that we actually want to um, draw and fragment shaders work in the same way but their purpose is to output color rather than position so before we dive into some of the code we're just going to i'm just going to introduce you to a website called shadertoy.com and uh, if you go to shadertoy.com you will see uh, some featured uh, shaders and you can hover over them to see how they work and you can also browse uh, to see some other shaders that the community has created and if you click on one of the shaders, you're able to, you'll be able to see some of the code, or you'll be able to see the code that the person wrote in order to get this cool uh, shader effect. Now, looking at this, you might be saying to yourself, oh my gosh, this person is a genius. I'm never going to get to this level. There's just too much going on, blah, 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 blah. But do not fret. Do not get discouraged, right? It is not an easy thing to do but the whole purpose of all this math everything that's going on here the purpose of it is to output a color and we specify what color we want our fragments to be and then it outputs that color and voila we get this cool effect that we see here so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new um a new fragment shader and uh, shader toy gives us a basic fragment shader to start off with that basically periodically changes the um, uh, background color uh, based on the amount of time that it's actually been executing and it's a pretty uh, cool basic effect and you can see how the code is actually executing uh, that right here um, pretty simple um, so as you can see, we have um, a, a output called fried color and fried coordinate. So the main thing that we want to focus on is fried color. And we'll learn about outputs and inputs and stuff later. But for now, uh, we just need to set a value to fried color. And whatever value we set to fried color will set the value for the fragment. Now, you've heard me say fragment um, a couple times. Uh, what do I mean by fragment? Well, the way... It, uh, the way graphics works is that you have your you have your vertex data you send your vertex data to the vertex shader and then it uh, you plot the positions and then eventually it um, given the hint that you've given it so say you want to uh, you're drawing using points it will draw the points or say you're drawing using um, a triangle it will draw the triangle and then it goes to the geometry shader which allows you to do uh, some extra cool effects with uh, that um, w with those um, with those shapes and then after that uh, comes the rasterization phase so the rasterization phase basically takes those shapes which you've drawn and it breaks them into uh, little pieces called fragments and so you take those little pieces called fragments and inside our fragment shader we're able to set a color for each one of those fragments now some people call fragment sh uh, fragments pixels it's not entirely accurate to call a fragment a pixel and we'll explore why that is um, in a later tutorial but if it makes it easier for you to understand you can refer to a fragment as a pixel so basically what it does is it breaks down the image into very, very tiny pieces and it goes along all the way across. And then you write a, sh a fragment shader program that will run for every single fragment within that actual shape. So in Shader Tool, we have this window and I want you to think of this window as a shape that we've actually drawn with a vertex shader. So imagine we have our point, a point here, we have a point here, we have a point here, and we have a point here. 
So we've set those points and we say that we want to draw this and it is drawn this shape for us. So now what's happening is that it's taking this shape, which is our window, and it's breaking it down into little tiny pieces called fragments. And now it's up to us to write a shader program to specify a color for each one of these pieces that is broken down into. So what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, um, take this and we're just going to specify color 1.0, 0.0, .0. 0, 0.0 and 1.0 for the alpha and we're just going to run it and as you can see it turns red so what's happening is that it was broken down into many pieces and every single time it iterates it's uh, looking for what color the pixel should be and then all of them get painted red so just before we continue just letting you know that in shader toy we don't um with in vertex shader r we went from zero negative one to one um in shader toy we go from zero to one and zero zero is this bottom left corner right here as of making this tutorial and just to prove that i'm not actually lying about that so what we're going to do is we're just going to as you can see we got this um, thing called the UV so what's happening is that they've given us a variable call a value called frag coordinate and that specifies the current co the coordinate of the current fragment that you're actually trying to draw so let's say that we're trying to we're working on this fragment right here it gives us that coordinate so as I told you though that in this in this screen space this goes from the value 0 to 1 and from 0 to 1 in, in the y-axis and so what we need to do is we need to convert those actual positions into a value between 0 and 1 and this is what this calculation does so it takes the real coordinate divides it by the resolution of the viewport and then it actually and then it um, and then it gives us a value between 0, 0, 0 and 1.0. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to do an if statement. So we're just going to say if uv.x is less than uh, 0 0.5, then we will set the frag color to this. And we'll just do an else. And then we'll copy this and we'll set the value to green. And if we run this, as you can see, so on the first half of the screen, right? So what's happening is all the pixels are running, all the fragments are, are running and blah, 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 blah. And it checks and it says, okay, this fragment is uh, when we do this calculation is less than 0 0.5. So we're going to set its color to red and so on and so forth. Once we get to the right hand side of the screen, it says, oh, okay, this value is greater than 0 0.5. So we're going to set the color to 1.0 and voila that's how we get that cool color so before i end off this tutorial if we click this drop down menu we see shader inputs and shader toy gives us some default values that we can actually work with so as you saw right here eye resolution it's a it's a input variable that uh shader toy gives us to give us the resolution of this render window right here and as you saw before with the example they gave us so if i create a new one um as you can see they use another shader input variable called i global time and this i global time will give us the time specified right here uh the time in seconds and um yeah, so then you got these variables that you can use in order to do some really cool uh, shader effects. So with that being said, we're just going to do one other, I guess, semi cool effect because right now we've only done a single color. But what we can do is we're just going to take this right here and we're just going to um, make this simple and not do any real advanced math. And... We're just going to set it like this and we're just going to click play and what did i do oh uv.x and as you can see we got a really cool gradient effect so what's going on here is that 
uh, at first uv dot x is set to zero. So say we're starting right here, right? It's zero in the x coordinate. So zero divided by whatever the resolution is is going to be zero. So then in the r in the r in the red channel that value set to zero. And as we slowly progress towards the right, right is going to be it's slowly going to increase in value. And so this might be zero point one. And then we slowly get to the middle, and then we get to zero point five, all the way until we get to the far right of the screen, and then we have a value of one and that's how we get this cool gradient effect so as you can see with fragment shaders we can do some pretty cool things we only did a very we did a fairly simple example in this uh tutorial the this tutorial wasn't really meant to give you a full breakdown of uh fragment shaders but just to give you an introduction on what they do what the purpose of them is so that you can you know start writing some basic fragment shaders so for practice you guys can take this knowledge and try to do a gradient that goes you know from left to right instead of from right to left sorry rather than from left to right try to do a vertical gradient try to do a diagonal gradient from each corner so a diagonal from here from here from here and from there try to do some cool things like that and uh, you'll be surprised at how challenging those simple things might be so, um, you know, try them out, practice, and I'll see you in the next video where we will actually go back to Visual Studio and then get our code set up to, uh, for, with, uh, get our code set up for vertex and fragment shaders. So that is it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and see you on the next video.